What's up, everybody? Um, today, I'm going to be answering a question that is posed by Christopher about some of the terms that I use to describe certain parts of the voice and how to perform it. And they can be very confusing because people use different terms for different things or use a term to define something completely different from what another voice coach might use. But hopefully I will be able to enlighten you, Christopher, and others of you watching this video today on what some of that terminology is. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna talk about are vocal registers. What is a vocal register? The best way to describe a vocal register is it's a lot like shifting gears in a car, especially if you have a manual shift. So you have first gear and then second gear and then third gear, fourth and fifth. Uh, for those of you who ride bicycles uh, who have gear shifts on that, it's very much like that as well. So with that, you can easily understand what a vocal register is and how to transfer between and blend the registers. And that's what I mean when I say a mixed voice or a head voice. This is a type of vocal register. It has a major correlation with pitch. However, you can sing the same pitch in a different register depending on where it is in the spectrum of pitch. There's the very first one is fry, the second one is chest voice, the third one is head voice, the one after that is falsetto, and then stuck in the middle here between chest voice and head voice is mixed voice. There's a lot of debate as to what mixed voice is. Some people like to to categorize that as a highly compressed, which means using the muscles in a certain way to compress the head voice. Um, other people like to say that it is a category on its own. It's essentially like Roy G. Biv. Some people say that indigo doesn't exist. Some people say that it does. So it's one of those debates. But with that said, I like to use that term to describe a highly compressed head voice because it does involve some mechanics of the chest voice as well as the head voice blending together. And we'll get more into that later on in this video. But enough with the theory. Let's go ahead and give you some examples of what these registers are. So like I said before, it does correlate very much with pitch. And then I'll give an example of how you can sing the same pitch in different registers as well. You will usually hear vocal fry in a very, very low pitch. Um, you will hear Tibetan monks usually practice this type of vocal fry. You will also hear this in very low Eastern European spiritual music. It's very, very low. It's usually coupled with a very extended vertical vowel. You'll also hear this in trailer narration. So the guys that narrate trailers for movies will be like, in a world where blah, 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 blah. That is a perfect example of low vocal fry. Um, you don't want to catch yourself going into vocal fry when you're up in your mid register. It's just not healthy for your voice. You have a ton of stuff rattling in here with highly adducted vocal folds, which means your vocal folds are closing at a higher vibration when you're talking like this, where, you know, Bill Clinton lives. <laughs> Moving on to the second category, chest voice. This is where most people speak from. This is where I'm speaking from right now. This is where most singers sing from as well. So there's a wide spectrum of pitch that comes along with chest voice for uh, trained professionals. And uh, it can be expanded over time for those who train. Uh, but just to give you an example of how low and how high I can go in my chest voice, I'm gonna slide down and then slide up and then do a scale as well. So, So that was all in my chest voice for the most part, except for that one little part where I did go into my fry for a second. So, but here is a scale uh, in my chest voice. That was all in my chest voice. And then if I wanted to go any lower in my pitch, I probably would have gone into my vocal fry. La 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 la. So you see, that's where I shifted gears, right around D2, I wanna say. So that gives you an idea of the first shift in the registers there. So that was an example of chest voice and also a shift in the vocal fry. Now, let's move on to head voice. Whenever I work with uh, kids, I always tell them that it's like their Mickey Mouse voice or their cartoon voice. Ah, so like this, ha ha, oh my gosh, ha 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 ha. So <laughs> you can do a lot of cool things with your head voice. Um, and here's an example of me doing a scale in head voice. La 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 la
You also hear this in popular music where you might be singing in chest voice and then transferring up into head voice for a nice little um, lilt or a really nice transition. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm sure that you've heard examples of that in um, the music that you listen to or, you know, it, just things that you've heard on the radio where it just goes, ah, that's, that being said, we're going to save mixed voice for the end just because it's a little bit more um, difficult to understand, but let's move on to falsetto. Now, falsetto is usually very high in pitch. So here's an example of falsetto. Now, falsetto, literally, in Italian to English, the translation from Italian to English is false voice, falsetto, falsetto. It's even in the term in Italian. But here's a really good little test that you can do, and do this at your own risk. Make sure that you are singing very high and that you've had training before you do this test, by the way. That will let you know whether or not you are in the right position for falsetto. I'm going to exhale and then inhale on the same pitch. And that lets me know that that F5 is in the right position for my falsetto voice. Now, you'll usually hear this type of singing with opera. Very, very high sopranos will use this. This is, this is a perfect example. Mariah Carey. She goes up there in her whistle register. Whistle register is a certain type of falsetto. She just, you know, she uses that really, really, really high falsetto. Sometimes you might hear a falsetto um, being used by a male singer in R&B. Five, six, seven octave ranges because they can go up into this high falsetto whistle register. And then sometimes you'll hear people even inhale to get a super, super high pitch as well, which is a considered a whistle register. That's a bonus to the falsetto right there. But still, it's a false voice. So that gives you a little bit of an understanding there. Now, let's talk about mixed voice. What I just did there was a distorted mixed voice and then a clean mixed voice. The distorted mixed voice, you will hear in pretty much all the 80s hair metal that you could possibly imagine. Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden. Um, there's a lot of guys that have implemented that distorted mixed tone. And then that, ow, that clean mixed tone you will find that in a lot of Broadway, uh, a lot of tenor singers will use that highly compressed head voice, which is also considered a mixed tone. So the whole goal of a singer is to be able to blend all these registers together up and down. And if you're looking for somebody who knows how to do this masterfully, look up Glenn Hughes. He was the bassist in Deep Purple. He was also a vocalist for that band. He is also now currently in a band called California Breed. This guy is in his 60s and he has an insane range. So he goes all the way and you find, find this video. I'm gonna try to find that video and link it in the description because it's amazing to watch him go from his vocal fry all the way up into his falsetto. It's insane. And so hopefully that gives you a little bit more clarity as to what the vocal registers are and how it correlates to the spectrum of pitch going up and down. To end this section, I'm going to give you an example of going all the way from my vocal fry all the way up into my falsetto and try to blend the registers together here. So that gives you an example of a scale going from my fry all the way up to my falsetto. Oh, the other thing that I'm going to do is show you how you could sing the same pitch in different registers. And like I said before in this video, that usually correlates with higher pitches rather than lower pitches. I'm going to sing a C5 in chest voice, head voice, falsetto, and mixed voice. So here we go. Ow! Oh! Chest voice. Ow! Oh! Head voice. Ooh! Falsetto. Ow! Oh! Distorted mixed tone. Ow! Oh! Clean mixed tone. So that gives you an idea of how you can sing the same pitch in a different register. Just like you can ride a bicycle in different gears at the same speed. So rather than going down into my lower chest voice and mixing that with my fry, uh, I'd like to skip that just because, you know, you're probably very rarely going to encounter that. You're going to be blending registers way more often in your in the higher spectrum of your singing. 
So hopefully that gives you a little bit more clarity on that. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about is homogenizing the vowel. And literally, it's saying the same vowel as you go higher in pitch. So we're gonna cover that in the next section here. Okay, let's see if I can describe this in the next three minutes before my next lesson. Homogenized vowels. You probably never heard this term before because it is a term that I coined personally. And what do I mean by homogenize exactly? Well, homogenization is a term that's usually used in science or chemistry when it comes to making a mixture of a whole bunch of different things. And you look at the mixture and the final mixture looks very much the same. It's the end result is a goopy sameness for lack of a better term. So the best example that I can give you is uh, a song by Soundgarden called Far Beyond the Wheel, where Chris Cornell goes way up into his mixed register and starts singing, Far Beyond the Wheel! So that right there is a perfect example of how the vowels homogenize. So as you go up in pitch, you usually will find that the vowel starts to look the same and that you move the jaw less in order to preserve the energy of the vowel because if you overpronounce that's what it starts sounding like because the jaw the tongue they all get in the way of your voice and they interact negatively with the soft palate so homogenizing the vowel and slowing down the the movement chewing on the phrase allows for that sound to come through it's something that I depend upon immensely whenever I'm singing with the small town titans you'll find that my bass goes up and all my vowels start looking the same now say that he's sung far beyond far beyond the wheel two octaves down far beyond the wheel. you can see how goofy and ridiculous it sounds but as you go higher generally speaking you're able to homogenize the vowel and get away with that. So I hope that this clarifies the terms that I was using in that previous video, Christopher. I will also link to the video of Glenn Hughes and his range going up and down, and that if you have any other questions, everybody, go ahead and ask them in the comments below in this video. Well, that was long and drawn out, wasn't it? But I feel it was necessary to cover all of those topics for Christopher. Thank you so much, by the way, for your question. I hope that this clarified a few things and that you're leaving with more knowledge in hand. For those of you watching this video, if you found it useful, please share it with somebody that you feel will appreciate this information. Like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you always know when I'm going to be posting next. So given that, everybody, thank you so much again for watching. Always remember, practice makes progress, and with that, you can go and find your voice. Take care until next time.